of This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, a federal judge has stayed the deportation of immigrant rights leader Ravi Ragbir after he filed a free speech lawsuit charging the Trump administration of targeting immigrant rights activists with surveillance and deportation. I want to list some of the other outspoken immigrants who have been targeted by ICE, as laid out by Nick Pinto in The Intercept. Daniela Vargas, a 22-year-old activist who came to the United States from Argentina when she was seven, was detained by ICE agents last March as she was leaving a news conference in Jackson, Mississippi, where she had spoken on the Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program that stayed her own deportation for lacking immigrant status. The same month, in Vermont, ICE arrested Jose Enrique Balcazar Sanchez and Zuli Victoria Palacios Rodriguez, two leading organizers with Migrant Justice, a workers' rights organization. Palacios Rodriguez's lawyer, Matt Cameron, told the Boston Globe that the offense she was arrested for, overstaying her visa by some eight months, wouldn't usually attract ICE's attention, and that it, it's especially unusual for such a person to be held without bail as his client was. A couple of months later, two more migrant justice activists, Yesenia Hernández Ramos and Isao Peche Ventura, were arrested by a Border Patrol agent and transferred to ICE custody after taking part in a march outside of Ben & Jerry's plant to demand better working conditions for farm workers supplying milk to the ice cream giant. In December, ICE began deportation proceedings against Maru Mora Villalpando, a 47-year-old activist who came from Mexico more than 25 years ago and is an outspoken critic of ICE's deportation and detention practices in the Seattle area. Also in December, Baltasar Aburto Gutierrez, a 35-year-old clam harvester in Washington state, was detained after he was quoted in local papers talking about his girlfriend's recent deportation. You're the one from the newspaper, Aburto Gutierrez says the ICE agent who detained him said. My supervisor asked me to come find you because of what appeared in the newspaper. Uh, in January, ICE agents in Colorado arrested Elisabeth Eliseo Jurado, after his wife Ingrid and Calada Latore publicly took sanctuary in a Boulder church to avoid deportation to Peru. That is all from Nick Pinto's article in The Intercept, titled ICE is Targeting Political Opponents for Deportation, Ravi Ragbir and Rights Groups Say uh, in Court. Uh, Ravi, this amazing uh, list of activists being uh, uh, rounded up, essentially, by ICE around the country. Your reaction? Well, what we are seeing here is a, 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 a you know a state of of, of fear that they're trying to create uh, by taking people away. Um, Maru has always been. A, I know Maru. Uh, we have been in many conferences together, and she has always been outspoken. And to to, to send her notice to appear now, so that she is in removal proceeding, is an, a. a, 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 a Direction shows the direction the agency is is heading to. Uh, look at the resources they are located to deport me. You are seeing that this is an intensification against the immigrant community. Um, you know, I, I will. You had a quote from from the president. Where is the due process? Well, we should be asking where yeah. is the due process in this, in in what what we are seeing. He was talking. President Trump was talking about for uh, sexual for domestic violence abusers in his White House. Correct. Which, and you have, you know, you have photographic proof of the abuse, but we have seen his support for those abusers, right? Um, but we are not seeing the support for the families who have been destroyed. Well, Lee Gerland of the uh, ACLU, what about that issue of due process? What due process rights do uh, people who, do, uh, who are in the country, according to ICE, illegally have? Yeah, they absolutely have due process rights. And the reason is because the Constitution uses the word persons rather than citizens. And the Supreme Court has long ago held that immigrants have due process rights. And what we are seeing around the country is the Trump administration rounding up people, large groups of people, and then trying to deport them abruptly without giving them their due process rights. And what's even more troubling, perhaps, is that when we go to court, they're saying the courts don't have jurisdiction authority to enforce the due process rights of immigrants. So the ACLU has been fighting cases in Detroit on behalf of Iraqis, Boston and New Jersey on behalf of Indonesian Christians. And what's Christians. happened in these cases? In these cases, the judges have all blocked the deportation, which is heartening. And I've been doing this a long time, but I don't think I can remember a time when the judges have been so pointed in questioning the government and saying, 
Some of these individuals, many of these individuals, are likely to be tortured or killed if sent back. Why are you rushing them out of the country without even giving them time to file claims? Um, the judges have, have been extremely critical of the government, uh, but issuing rigorous legal opinions. The government's appealed, and we'll see what happens. But for now, it's been heartening. But in, in a lot of those cases, it's been ethnic groups that were, in essence, targeted by the, right. by ICE. What about this issue of political uh, activists, in essence, yeah. uh, which is obviously not uh, a lot more difficult, possibly, to first to amass the evidence and then to get rulings on? Right. So I think those cases are a subset of this larger problem. We are they at the ACLU are hearing about these cases, as Robbie pointed out, as you've pointed out, all over the country, where people who are speaking out are being targeted, and we're concerned that it's suppressing, suppressing political speech. And that's very troubling. And what we anticipate the government saying is, well, the courts don't have jurisdiction to do anything about it. So I think we're in for a long battle before the courts. I want to read what the ICE deputy director, Thomas Homan, told The New York Times about the recent decisions by federal judges in cases of immigrants who are fighting their deportation. He said, I'm increasingly troubled by orders from federal judges halting the deportation of certain groups of individuals, all of which appear to ignore the fact that each alien in question was lawfully ordered removed from the United States after full and fair proceedings, many of which lasted several years or longer, at great taxpayer expense. Further, these orders hinder ICE's efforts to address the clear public safety threat posed by many of these aliens, the majority of whom have criminal convictions. Of course, entering the United States illegally is itself a crime, said ICE's deputy director, Thomas Holman, legal errant. Yeah, I mean, that's not responsive to what the federal judges are saying. The federal judges are recognizing that these individuals have final orders, but what they're also pointing out is these final orders were decades ago. These individuals have lived peaceful lives for decades. But more importantly, if they're sent back, they may be tortured. And so the part of the law that he's ignoring is that Congress has set up a system to say you can go and reopen your case if you believe you're going to be tortured or persecuted if sent back. That's the part of the law that Congress enacted that he's ignoring. So, well, uh, last week, a federal judge in Newark, New Jersey, <laughs> temporarily blocked the removal of dozens of Indonesian Christians, including two fathers, who were detained by ICE as they were taking their children to school. We're joined by Seth Copperdale, a pastor of the Reformed Church of Highland Park in New Jersey. He was the Green Party candidate for governor of New Jersey in 2017. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you so much, Juan, and thank you. Could you tell us the, the latest developments uh, with the folks that were taking uh, refuge in your church? Yes, yeah, so with those taking refuge in our church, I can say that after the ACLU lawsuit was filed a week ago Friday and the judge heard it immediately, um, we felt a great deal of relief. Um, the, the lawsuit itself doesn't say that ICE can't take action against people here, but it says that ICE can't remove people from the country or move them out of district. So we believe that um, the people who are living in our sanctuary um, can go home, and they have gone home, and they have been safe since that time. We think it would be very foolish if ICE were to um, act against them when a judge has clearly uh, made it clear that um, this is an exploratory moment. So um, one of the things that concerns us is that the two people who were detained um, two weeks ago, Thursday, the same day that one of my church members made it here into sanctuary, they are still detained. We were hoping that maybe they would be released during the time that things were pending. We have, you know, four U.S. citizen children who are desperate to see their, their dads. And so we're, we're hopeful that that ICE would release them during the time that this was holding. But as of now, they're still detained. The governor got involved, is that right? Um, the Democratic governor, after he was yeah. sworn in, came to your church. I want to turn to one of the wives of the Indonesian men targeted by ICE, speaking with the New Jersey governor, Phil Murphy, during his visit to your church, the Highland Park Reformed Church. She's not seen on camera to protect her identity. I came in here in 1998 when a Chinese China in Indonesia was raping, was killing, was torture, yep. and then I was escaped and came in this country. Since I came in, I came into New Jersey. I working, I pay tax, I pay my own insurance, and then right now I'm working for pay the insurance for my husband and my kids. Yep. I never 
even claim any penny from the government to give me stand up. Yep. Right now, I'm talking be, be helped on my myself and my two yep. friends. You know, we are here. We're working hard. I didn't ask you for anything. Yep. Just leave us alone, you yep. know, and then let us raise our children until whatever dream they want. We don't want to kill their dream because I cannot bring them to my country. It's 100%. not belong to them. So that was the wife of one of the Indonesian men that was taken. Um, Pastor Seth Copperdale, um, the significance of the intervention of the stay of deportation now, do you see this as part of a trend of federal judges saying no to the Trump administration? And uh, what needs to happen now? Also, there are a group of Indonesians, and I believe Lee Galeran can ex uh, address this, in Boston. Yes. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, I do see it as a trend. And I would say that in the case of the Indonesians, my congregation was deeply involved in working with ICE many years ago in creating opportunities for Indonesians who are not a deportation priority to get stays because ICE recognized the horrible torture and possible danger that awaited folks in Indonesia. So we've worked in the past with, with ICE to do the things that now we're counting on judges to do. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that's happening. We, we had a moment where um, the administration understood prosecutorial discretion, especially around issues around torture and other things. And now we're in a place where we're counting on judges to do what at one point we could count on the administrative wing to do. Uh, Lee Gunnar, what, what about the, uh, this issue of the Indonesian Christians, especially when, since President Trump has on several occasions talked about the persecution of Christians around the world, and right. yet right here in the United States they're not dealing with the legitimate requests of the Indonesian Christians not to be sent back to a, a place where they could be persecuted. Yeah, exactly. And so we went to court in Boston on behalf of approximately 50 Indonesian Christians, and the judge blocked the deportation. And the judge said, look, I am not deciding the legality of their deportation, but what I am going to do is give them time to go before an immigration court to show that, as Indonesian Christians, they will be persecuted or tortured if sent back. And that's just basic due process. Now the Indonesian Christians in New Jersey are being threatened in the same way, so we went to court and blocked that. But it's Christian Iraqis out of Detroit in the whole country. It's How many Iraqis in Detroit are you representing? There are 1,900 approximately around the country, not just Detroit. We expanded it to the whole country. The judge has blocked nationwide. And all we're asking for is basic due process. Let them go to immigration court to show they're going to be tortured or killed. When the judge said to the administration, why not give them time? It's clear that they may be in danger. The, the administration said, no, I'm not giving, we're not giving them any time. That's when the judge stepped in, in the best traditions of our federal court. And Ravi Ragbir, Holman, the deputy director of ICE, attacking the judiciary. Well, it's not only Holman. You, you, if you hear um, deputy, um, sorry, the, um, the AG, Attorney General Sessions, he himself have said publicly that this country would be so much better if we didn't have a judiciary where it is right now. Um, that's that's that's. That's, that shows the direction of where we're heading to. And I also wanted to point out two things. Uh, one is my case is the, 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 the New Jersey case is different, and the First Amendment case is different. We, they're, they're saying that they don't have, I just saying that they, that court doesn't have jurisdiction for a case that is dealing with a criminal conviction uh, and the First Amendment. Um, it is not has nothing to do with the actual deportation order itself, and that is what is at stake here, where they are taking away the tools of the court to protect its own its own space, its own its own process, and they are, they are fighting that. Um, and you know, you, you see that the violence that is coming as a this result. This critical point, and McNulty, um, the federal judge in Newark, made this point um, repeatedly on Friday. This issue of what it means when you have someone before them. And then another uh, branch of government deports them. Well, absolutely. And so I, I just want to be clear that is happening in Ravi's case, but it is happening in all the cases I've described. In every case, the government's principal argument is the court lacks jurisdiction to do anything. And so that's the common theme around the country. The courts don't have authority 
to do anything. And that's what the courts have rejected so far, and hopefully will continue to reject. Well, I want to thank you both for, and all for being with us. Uh, Ravi Ragbir, uh, who now has a deportation date for March 15th, but a federal judge in New Jersey is uh, going to decide whether to extend a stay before that date. Uh, Pastor Seth Copperdale, speaking to us from New Jersey, uh, whose uh, church has given sanctuary to an em Indonesian immigrant, and Lee Gallant of the ACLU Immigrants' Rights Project. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we remember a great human rights lawyer, humanitarian and activist from Pakistan. Stay with us.